Well, the non-tender deadline came and went, and the Reds essentially stayed put. I'll tell you what they did, what it means, and a thought about Michael Lorenzen, and more trade rumors. And uh, we'll also get you set for the lockout that is coming probably tomorrow. That's all coming up on today's Locked On Reds podcast. Thank you for joining me. Let's get going. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds, and thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Glad to have you aboard. I'm your host, Jeff Carr, super fan an addict of the Cincinnati Reds. I've turned that addiction into information for you on today's podcast. We're going to talk about what the Reds did at the non-tender deadline and why it was exactly what I figured they would do. They kind of kept the status quo. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some trade rumors as we continue to see rumors about Luis Castillo, Tyler Malley, Sonny Gray, all being talked about in trades with other teams what that all means. And I'll I'll talk just a brief thought about Michael Lorenzen before we get into some lockout talk. Thanks for making lockdown reds your hashtag first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts at. You can follow and subscribe on your favorite podcasting app as well as subscribe right here on YouTube. All right, let, let's jump into it because we've got a lot to talk about when it comes to what the Reds did, despite the fact that the Reds didn't do a lot. They only non-tendered one player. In fact, it's former guest of the podcast. I mean, he's still guest of the podcast. Hopefully we'll get him on as spring training uh, nears, but Brandon Bailey was non-tendered by the Reds. However, he was turned around and offered a minor league contract. That's kind of been the Reds' favorite thing to do ever since the offseason started. They've not signed anybody to a major league contract as of yet. It's not surprising. It's something that we talked about on yesterday's podcast of how the Reds have waved goodbye to Wade Miley and Tucker Barnhart, and there's rumors of them possibly trading more players So they're going to hang on to their cost-controlled younger players, the guys that we thought maybe they might move on from if all things were considered equal. Some guys who underperformed this past season, those guys are going to be brought back and hoped for, you know, some kind of a bounce back, some kind of a step forward, some kind of a resurgence, if you will, depending on who you're talking about. But with that all being said, You know, just a quick look at Brandon Bailey, probably the reason that he was non-tendered. He's recovering from Tommy John surgery. Reds really didn't get a good look at him. He busted his elbow in spring training this past, uh, this past year, and he had to get the surgery. He's going to hopefully be ready for spring training this season and all in all you know, signs are pointing to that. However, as it was confirmed to me on Twitter, as I was freaking out and saying, man, that really sucks because I was looking forward to seeing him pitch in a Reds uniform. He was brought back on a minor league deal and will compete for a spot on the roster in spring training. It'll be fun to see. That was a guy that we talked about as being part of the whole Spincinnati mantra of this past off season where the Reds went out and went for pitchers who had high spin rates on their different pitches. He is absolutely one of them. His curveball is an elite spin rate. Would love to see what they can do with Brandon Bailey in the bullpen. So with all that being said, he was the only guy, everybody else either was tendered a contract or, you know, they're, they're going to move forward with everybody on the list, which includes like Samir Mayor Garrett. Uh, you've got, uh, Jeff Hoffman on there, uh, Tyler Naquin, uh, Nick Senzel, uh, Kyle Farmer, a lot of guys like that. Tyler Malley, Luis Castillo, those guys were obviously going to stick around, but all of them will be moving forward with. So now they're talking about having to figure out if they're going to accept the contract that was tendered to them, which there are no reports as to exactly what those numbers are as of now, but they will have to decide if they want to accept that contract or if they would like to present their numbers and then go into arbitration. They're probably going to do that during this whole dead period that's about to come up. Something that happened Back in 94, 95, whenever they had that lockout, there were players that, you know, it's kind of up in the air for them since it started in the middle of the season. 
So there's still an up in the air feeling to what's going to happen, but these guys know that they're at least going to be on the roster. So the 40 man roster now sits at 38 players. I think that was probably the biggest reason for Brandon Bailey to be non tendered. So they make some space. This probably means that they may at least participate in the rule five draft being that they are going to focus more on the cost effective players and the guys whose contracts don't have exorbitant numbers, probably going to be one or two of those guys, if not a cheap signing through free agency. And no, there was a tweet that was going around that lots of people had shared and people were getting excited about that came from a very unverified account and somebody who does not know, does not have knowledge of the situation. There was a random dude on Twitter that tweeted about Nick Castellano signing a huge deal with the Reds. That's false. Not real. Don't believe the hype. He is still very much a free agent. Speaking of free agents, the Reds lost a relief pitcher to free agency, and in fact, he's going to be a starting pitcher for the Los Angeles Angels. Coming up, we'll talk about Michael Lorenzen, and we'll talk about the trade rumors that continue to persist around Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray, and Tyler Malley. I'll give you, if the Reds had to trade one of those guys, I'll tell you who I think that should be. Coming up in just a minute. Before we talk about that, though, I want to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is the amazing holiday dessert that won't break your diet. If you're like me and you kind of want to be at least a little bit diet conscious, look, I, I love me some cookies and some good sugary stuff, especially around the holidays like this. Built Bar can help kind of insert itself in there, give you that sugary craving, but also fit into your diet because we're talking about built bars that are up to 180 calories and less than four grams of fat and less than four grams of sugar and up to 18 grams of protein. We're talking about delicious flavors like the brand new Ruby chocolate puff. You got to check this out. I mean, it's not white chocolate. It's not milk chocolate. It's not dark chocolate. It's Ruby chocolate. It's got a little bit of a berry taste to it. And it's in the puff form of the bar, which I kind of equate those to like a three musketeer. So very light and fluffy whenever you take a bite into them. They just melt in your mouth. Check them out today at built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to save 15% off your next order. They've got the staple flavors like cherry barcia, coconut, raspberry. They've got all the fruit flavors, double chocolate as well, peanut butter brownie if you like some peanut butter in there, plus plenty of caramel flavors too. Go to built.com. Check them out today and use that promo code LOCKED15 to save 15% off your next order of the amazingly delicious Built Bar. Thanks again for making Locked on Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. Appreciate anybody who's sharing those Spotify wrapped things. It's that time of year where you get your uh, recap, if you're a Spotify listener, of what you listen to throughout the entire year. Shout out to at Get Shrocked as uh, Locked on Reds is apparently his most listened to thing on Spotify. Uh, you know, Let me know on Twitter if that is you as well. But always, uh, thanks for making us your hashtag first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. If it's not Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on Good Pods, it's on Podbean, it's on Overcast, whatever you can think of, that's where we are. And uh, coming up on tomorrow's podcast, we'll take a trip back through time on some throwback Thursday. And I've also got a thought, and it's a really cool article on The Athletic that I want to flesh out a little bit from Brett Garoli talking about the idea of having a transaction deadline during the off season for baseball, because let's face it, baseball off seasons are boring compared to that of the NBA or the NFL. And it might be a way to uh, kind of drum up some interest there and, you know, give teams the sense of urgency to go out and do something before the last day before spring training. All right, let's talk about these trade rumors because once again, we see it crop up and today it was in the form of a John Morosi tweet, which granted, uh, let me explain this too for a minute because he said that the Rangers have inquired about the Reds starting pitcher threesome that might be available, whether you're talking about Luis Castillo, Tyler Malley, or Sonny Gray, but here's the key word. They inquired about them. It's not as if there's something close. It's not as if something is going to happen immediately between the Reds and the Rangers. The Reds have said that they are regulating their budget. They are regulating payroll. They are realigning things this off season. So everybody is calling about any awesome red 
who's making money because they're looking at it as, hey, we can take some money off their hands and help them realign that budget by trading for Luis Castillo or trading for Sonny Gray, who will be the most expensive of the three, or trading for Tyler Malley. Of the three, if I had to choose one, which I don't want the Reds to trade any of them, because here's the thing, and I know that there's some of you that are going to push back on this, but the Reds have to figure out what they are. They cannot just be this 81-win team. 81 wins doesn't do anything for you. You're not going to get a good draft pick, and you're not going to get a playoff spot. Although, if they expand the playoffs this upcoming season like they're talking about, that might be a discussion. However, if you're just going to be happy with mediocrity, I don't like that. And they need to kind of figure out what the plan is going to be. Should they find themselves into the ability to find cost-effective players who can still help them contend, they should go for that. Or they should trade off guys who are going to bring in some good prospects who will help the team kind of reset and be amazing in two or three years. But you're not going to do that by only trading one guy. But whatever, just for kicks, let's talk about these three pitchers. The one guy, if I had to choose... I'd say trade Sonny Gray. He's got a contract option at the end of this season, which if the Reds are going to just continue what they've been doing these past two off seasons, they're not going to pick up that option. But he's got a contract option at the end of this year, so essentially this is his contract season. If they can get a pretty good, decent trade chip back for Sonny Gray, then we're talking about a guy who they could get rid of in his contract season, who is the most expensive of these three pitchers, who could also help the team retool, if you will, not rebuild. Rebuild means that they're going to tear down. They're not doing that. And they have a young enough core that they don't need to do that. And I don't understand. Anyway, that's something we've talked about a lot. I don't want to get down that rabbit hole again. But when I talk about these three guys, I look at Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray has been an awesome pitcher when you talk about that five innings of greatness. It kind of seems like once he gets past that fifth inning, he starts to have problems in the sixth and the seventh, and his durability has been at least in question over these last two years. So it's something to note that if he continues to have durability problems this season, he might not be that big of a trade chip come the trade deadline time. Which this is also to say there's no ticking clock on the Reds here to make a deal right now to trade away Sonny Gray. They can wait till the trade deadline if the need be and go for a team that is very starting pitcher hungry but sees themselves as in the playoff race and hopefully get some prospects that way. So it's not as if this needs to happen immediately. But with the Rangers in this specific report, they are looking for pitching help And while they've got a couple of guys on their roster already, they still need more pitchers. They've spent a lot of money on the hitting side of things. I mean, their middle infield is completely rebuilt with Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon, so that's pretty cool. But overall, they haven't really addressed their pitching staff like they want to. So Sonny Gray would help them do that. Plus, he'd get back to the A up list where he began his career with the Oakland A's. So when I look at these trade rumors, I don't necessarily think that they're anywhere near trading Luis Castillo or Tyler Malley. And I don't even know that they're that close on trading Sonny Gray either. It's just that teams know that the Reds have said that they're realigning payroll. So everybody's going to call. And when you see a tweet from a reporter that says such and such team has inquired about such and such player, that literally could mean Somebody sent a text to Nick Crawl saying, hey, is this guy available? So the report's not false in that case. It's just to what extent is where everybody tends to fill in the blanks and they start doing that erroneously based on what the actual facts are. And real quick, too, before we end this segment, I want to talk about Michael Lorenzen. Michael Lorenzen signed with the Los Angeles Angels, and I talked about this on yesterday's podcast in that I didn't believe he was ever coming back to the Reds, at least not this offseason. He is trying to compete as a starting pitcher. He wants to start, and he even said that he wants to play the outfield on the days that he's not starting. The Reds were not going to give him that opportunity. And here's the reason why. Nick, uh, Michael Lorenzen has actually been a pretty solid reliever, except for these last two seasons. He's kind of struggled, but for the most part in his career, he's been a great setup guy, a great dude who helped bridge the gap between the starter and Rysel Iglesias in years past. His 2019 season was the best year of his career. He pitched over 80 innings and he had an ERA under three. 
Now, as FIP says, he was getting a little bit lucky there, but that's neither here nor there. It was a good season. He's never been a high strikeout guy, though. Like, he, he tipped nine strikeouts per nine innings in 2019 and 2020, but for the most part, with those strikeouts came higher walk totals, and we've talked about how much I hate that out of the bullpen. So with that, I'm not looking at Michael Lorenzen as the surefire, oh my gosh, the Reds totally missed the boat on bringing him back. And for the Angels, they got to look at this as interesting because, yeah, they're going to slot him into the starting rotation, but he hasn't made regular starts since 2015. Now you're going to say, well, Jeff, he started a couple of games in 2020. Yeah, so what? Like, I mean, I get it. He had a couple of starts, but I believe in both of those starts, he didn't get past four innings pitch. Like he might've pitched into the fifth inning, but then he was pulled. So this isn't a scenario where it's a surefire thing for the angels. This is kind of a gamble for them. Plus they're paying him $7 million. That's more than the Reds were going to pay him this season to be a reliever. So that wasn't happening either. So anybody that's kind of losing their minds about Michael Lorenzen going, and, and don't get me wrong, I was a huge homer for Michael Lorenzen. I loved Michael Lorenzen. I loved the back end of the bullpen for the Reds, the law firm of Michael and Michael, which it looks like neither one of those guys are going to be Reds this upcoming season. But I understand that he was moving on. He wanted to start. The Reds weren't going to let him. It's kind of, you know, intuitive at that point. All right, coming up. Let's talk about the lockout. Let's talk about the freeze that's going to happen. Mr. Freeze, get ready for puns. Before we talk about that, though, let's talk about betonline.ag. Head on over there today and set up your profile with the promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus. Betonline.ag has all the best lines when you're talking about basketball, college, or pro. And they've got great lines with the NFL as they're heading toward the playoffs. And as college football is heading into the conference championship weekend, we've got the Bearcats going up against the Cougars, I about call them the Rockets, the Houston Cougars, this Saturday at Nippert Stadium. Looking forward to that. But you can bet on all those great lines at betonline.ag and more. You're talking about the NHL, UFC, boxing. They've got it all, plus your favorite Vegas casino games are at betonline.ag. Go there today and set up your profile by using the promo code Locked On and get a 50% welcome bonus. Betonline.ag is the only online sportsbook that I trust. And you should too. If you're looking to make some money off your sports knowledge today, the best place to do it is betonline.ag, where the game starts. All right, I've kind of touched on this subject a little bit, and I've mostly avoided it uh, because I know that we're going to be talking about it a lot, pretty much starting the end of this week. The lockout is looming. It's going to start most likely December the 2nd. Now, Evan Drellick had an article out in The Athletic where he talks about there is a chance that the two sides, the players and the owners, at least get close enough in negotiating to push back a possible lockout date. The thing of it is, it is completely impossible, according to him and according to multiple reports from Ken Rosenthal and from, you know, Buster Olney, different people who are covering the CBA negotiations, it's completely impossible for them to actually come up with a CBA by the deadline of 11.59 Eastern Time tonight. That is when the current CBA will expire. Now, if negotiations kind of move to a point where they think that a mutual understanding is at least closer than where it is, they may choose to delay the lockout because this is something that the owners impose. This isn't something the players choose. This isn't like a strike. They're not going to not show up for work because, well, it's the off season. So the owners must choose to initiate the lockout in which that will put a freeze on free agency, a freeze on any sort of transactions or negotiations or anything like that. There will be no winter meetings. There will be no uh, rule five draft that will all get pushed back till when the CBA is actually done. And I don't know that they'll actually have any sort of like winter meetings at that point. It'll be a good God, we got to get all this in before spring training starts type of like rush after the CBA is negotiated. And there was a great article in the athletic as well talking about, or no, that was on MLB.com. Sorry. Get my websites mixed up, but there was a great article about comparing the two 
of back when the long lockout in 94, 95 happened. And whenever that was lifted, whenever the strike was lifted and there was a mad dash of free agency and trades and things like that. So there could be an exciting time coming in February for lots of transactions to happen. But until that point, there's going to be a lot of nothing. There's going to be a lot of reporting on which side is making the most ridiculous demand demand today. We'll talk about things like that as they happen. But the biggest reason for all of this and the big picture as to why this fight is going to be so big between the players and the owners is two reasons. Number one, the players feel that the owners have gained significant advantages in the recent negotiations, something that players were comfortable to the point that they made too many concessions. They allowed the player or they allowed the owners to really control the negotiations and change the playing field, something that they don't want to do this time around. And because of that, the second point of this is because they hired an attorney in Bruce Meyer, who is going to slop through all the muck in the mire to help them get the outcome that they most uh, want. There's going to be some sort of negotiation, some sort of compromise that they come to that the players are going to like a lot more than they've liked in most recent years. Major League Baseball has been lauded for the fact that they're the one professional sport that hasn't had a lockout in like the last 20 years or something like that, 25 years, whatever the total is. And, And people have talked about the peace that has happened, but it's an uneasy peace because the players feel that they've acquiesced too much. And so they're going to fight back essentially in negotiation terms for what they want this game to look like. They feel like competitive balance is a ridiculous thing that over half the league isn't even trying to make the playoffs that they're so worried. And when you, when you look at the numbers that everybody's been talking about recently, how the Cleveland guardians payroll is now less than Max Scherzer's salary for this upcoming season, They're like, something's got to give here. So what that all looks like is going to be the topic of this CBA. And there's there's other further details as well that we'll flesh out in the coming days. But that's the big picture. They want a more competitive league, and they want to stop all this tanking. They want to stop the veteran players getting passed over in free agency because owners think that they're asking too much money, And they'd rather have this up and coming young player who isn't proven, who's going to make the league minimum, take the roster spot of the proven veteran that could help them win more games. That's understandable. Plus, they don't like the fact that younger players are getting taken advantage of. The guys who are amazing have to wait four or five, six years before they can hit free agency and make their hay. Things like that. There's more details that are going to come out each and every day following this. We're going to be covering it to a T. You can definitely count on Lockdown Reds bringing you the big news of the day when it comes to the CBA each and every day right here on the podcast. Though, as of right now, there's nothing really concrete as to what the players like detailed demands are, what the owners detailed. There was something about the owners coming up with the idea of a war-based arbitration system that... That in and of itself seems a little bit weird, but yeah, that was something the players had no interest in whatsoever, but that is at least something uh, that's been come up. And, And when I look at this period of time where the lockout and the freeze, chill, yeah, that's the first of many Mr. Freeze puns I'm going to put in on this one, but, um, when, whenever the freeze gets going, I, I think that we're looking at groundhog day. If I had to make an estimation as to when the new CBA is a done deal and we get back to where they are. I don't think that either the players or the owners want to see a delay. And that's obvious. They're going to make that known whenever they come out and they make their public addresses and things like this. But I don't think anybody wants to see a delay in the sport. They understand that Major League Baseball is in a tenuous position when it comes to all the professional sports in America. And right now is a very... volatile time for popularity because the NBA, the NFL, and the NHL are all in season. So for Major League Baseball to come out and say, yeah, you know how baseball season's coming soon? Well, it's not. It's going to get pushed back. They don't want to do that. So I think that there still will be a pretty knockdown drag out fight, but they're going to be able to come to some kind of consensus by Groundhog Day. That's what 
I'm saying. I, I could be totally wrong. I don't know. That's just a guess on my point. So that's what we're looking at here at Locked On Reds. We're going to make sure we get that covered for you each and every day. Plus, there'll still be plenty of Reds content. That's why I want to do like Throwback Thursday. We're going to look back on some, we're going to look ahead at some players and what they're going to do this upcoming season and what we can hope for, at least, from some players who could take the next step. That's all coming at you as the lockout happens. So when you see the words, Major League Baseball is locked out, everything's frozen, that doesn't mean that Locked On Reds will be frozen. Locked On Reds will be coming at you each and every day throughout the off season. But that's going to do it for us here today. Thank you so much for watching here on YouTube and for listening on your favorite app. Make sure that you're subscribed. Thanks again for making hashtag making us your hashtag first listen of the day. Now make your second listen locked on bets. Your boy Q and Lee Sterling will use their expert advice and uh, know-how to help you make a couple of bucks over at betonline.ag. That's locked on bets just like locked on reds. Free and available wherever you get your podcast coming up tomorrow. A little bit of throwback Thursday action coming for you, and we'll keep you updated on any CBA negotiation details that are out there because it might be the off season. But we're locked on Reds every single day.